Hey guys, MapleBoarder78 here. I'm gonna show you how to convert your bike to an electric lithium powered bike. Let's get started. So this is the complete bike kit that I got from Amazon for $255 shipped. So this is the completely pre-assembled uh, motor, wheel, and tire. It's all pre-assembled. You don't have to worry about assembling it. Uh, here's the bike rack that comes with it that you can put your batteries in. Uh, there's the speed controller. Um, you got some handle grips. Here's the thumb throttle. Uh, these are optional brakes that you can use. I'm not going to be using those. A random bungee strap and a charger that I'm not going to be using because I'll be using lithiums. So the batteries I'm going to use are um, RC car batteries or remote control car batteries. They're meant for remote control cars. I got these on HobbyKing.com. They're $112 each. So I got two of these and with shipping it was $234 shipped and um, I just soldered on some little Dean's connectors. So Dean's connectors are really popular in the RC community. A lot of guys use these, so that's what I'm gonna be using to connect the batteries to the electrical system. So these are known as 6S batteries, or six cell batteries. So they're about 22.2 volts, but when fully charged, they're actually about 25 volts. So um, these are what we're gonna use. Uh, they're eight amp um, batteries or uh, as we know them in RC, it's 8,000 milliamp batteries. And these are called uh, Turnigy Nanotech 6S 8 amp batteries, uh, if you're looking for them when you Google it to find these to purchase. Now most guys I talk to who are going to do this conversion already have RC cars and are into them and have uh, a LiPo charger made specifically to charge um, RC LiPo batteries. So this is the one I have. This is a Thunder AC6 charger. I got this on hobbyparts.com and um, it was, I think it's about $38 if you don't have one. Um, so it, uh, it will charge the batteries that we're gonna use. Now you're also gonna need a series connector and you wanna get a series connector that has Deans if that's what you're gonna be using. You can use other battery connectors if you prefer. I like Deans. So this is about $6 on amazon.com and this is gonna allow us to run the two LiPo batteries in series to make enough voltage to power the system. We're also going to use this low voltage alarm. Now these are about $3 on Amazon when I purchased them. And uh, these will go off an, an alarm and make a really loud beep when your LiPos are, are getting close to being done. Because with LiPo batteries, you can't drain them past 3.1, 3.2 volts per cell or you can damage the batteries. They're not like uh, regular batteries where you can just drain them all the way down to dead. So this will let you know when you get down to 3.2 or 3.1, wherever you want to set it. This is adjustable, so you can adjust it to where you want to go. Personally, I wouldn't let them drain past 3.1 or 3.2 volts per cell. So uh, you're going to have this um, hooked up to the batteries when you're riding the bike. And then if it gets down to that low, the alarm will sound and let you know so you can stop and not damage the batteries. So let's get started. Um, we're going to take the bike, flip it upside down, and uh, we're going to take our crescent wrench and we're going to get the front wheel off. So we're going to go ahead and take the front wheel off, just two nuts on either side. Now the front brakes are clamping down around the tire. They're not going to let you pull the tire off unless you loosen up the, the cable here. So we're just going to take our crescent wrench, undo the cable, there you go. And see that's going to that's gonna open them up and then let us pull the tire off. Now we should be able to pull the tire off. There you go. Now you saw I was working on a black bike. I have the exact same bike in red and silver. So that's the one I'm working on right now. I'm just installing the rear rack. Um, you know, in earlier in the video, you saw that the kit um, came with the rack and the bag. The bag uh, Velcros to the rack with included Velcro straps in the kit. And then um, you can just head down to your local hardware store and you just need two nuts and two bolts. Um, just, you should be able to buy them for like a dollar. And uh, that, those are just going to go through and hold the rack on to the rear of the bike here. 
Now I'm just installing the speed control to the side of the frame. Um, a lot of people will just take the speed control and throw it into the rear um, rack bag uh, with the batteries, but I like to keep it on the side of the frame. Um, I think it looks sleek. I just went to the local hardware store, bought a couple um, bolts and nuts to go through the frame and connect it uh, really good and solid on there. And, um, and then just with all the wires, I just kind of wrapped them up and then just use uh, some zip ties uh, to make them just look a lot cleaner and hold the wires up to the frame. Thumb throttle is super easy to install. Just slides on the handlebar. I'm going to put it right against uh, my brakes here. Then you can put your gear shifter, slide that on. You can tighten these on. Um, the way they tighten onto the bar is just with an Allen hex. So super easy. And then uh, the kit also came with some uh, little rubber grip handles that you can use. So these were a little long for my application, so I just took scissors, because these are just rubber, cut it to my size, and then you just slide this on there. And then uh, tighten those down with the Allen key, and uh, you have your thumb throttle all set up. Now the bike tire here is super easy to install. So just like in the beginning of the video where we took off the old tire, it's exactly how you put this on. Just like you saw earlier as well in the kit, this comes, this wheel comes pre-assembled. It has the tire on it already. It, it's aired up. Um, I just had to top it off with a little more air. And um, you just slide it on, um, and then it comes with supplied nuts, and you just tighten it on. After you get that torqued on, remember to come back up here and uh, readjust your brakes. So you just feed that wire through that nut, and then you just tighten it down. Now, a very important element of an electric bike conversion like this is getting a torque arm. So these torque arms you can find on Amazon. They're about $30 shipped. Um, they're specific. You can get front ones and rear ones. So this is specifically for a front. Um, all it does is before you tightened on that nut, before I mean before it was even on there, the torque arm just slides right over that. Then you put the nut on, you can tighten it down. You can adjust this nut here, you know, get it kind of centered up, just eyeball it. And then it comes with two hose clamps with a little kit that you're gonna strap on and that's gonna hold the top part to the fork. So this is gonna keep the torque of the motor from op bending open your forks and ripping the wheel off. So it's a very important safety measure. Now to power the system, uh, the kit just comes with a very basic battery connector. It's just a generic connector. And again, remember I told you in the beginning that I was using Deans. I've, I use Deans on my batteries and uh, on the um, series connector. So I just took the ground and the power, I just snipped off the generic battery connector, and then I soldered on my own Deans connector. So I have everything plugged in on the bike. Everything's really easy to plug in. It's all plug and play from the kit. Um, besides, you know, my battery connectors that I showed you with the Deans. So when I want to use uh, the bike, bring my two batteries, set them in the bag. I'm just going to connect them. There's one. And two. Then I'm going to take my low voltage alarm and I'm going to plug it into one of the balance connectors on the battery. It's going to tell me what all the voltage of each cell in the batteries are. So I got everything installed on the bike. Um, you know, just use common sense, uh, get some zip ties, and you're just going to be uh, zip tying all the wires, just kind of kind of clean it up. You know, it's real common sense. Uh, to do that stuff. I'm going to show you a cool thing I did to kind of have a gas gauge basically on my handlebars so I can see how much voltage is left in the cells so I can know you know hey it's starting to go down and I need to charge them instead of having to open the bag every time. So I bought um, this 10 pack of 6S balance connector extenders so now I plug in my batteries to this I ran these extenders all the way up the rail of the bike and came up to my handlebar here and I just used a little shoe goo to uh, install the low voltage alarm just on top of my brake right here and now I get my voltage reading right there. So now I plugged it in and you can see just above my thumb throttle there I have uh, the voltage of all the cells so I can check it while I'm driving. 
So I ended up using that random bungee cord in the kit uh, to wrap around the bike bag just to keep the batteries more secure. And then uh, don't pay attention to this here. That wasn't part of the kit. Um, that is part of a child's kid seat so I can take my four-year-old riding with me. Her seat connects to that uh, bar here. Well, it's all set. Now I'm going to take it uh, up in the hills for a test drive. See you later. throttle here at half throttle it'll cruise at a, about a good uh, 20 miles an hour pretty effortlessly on flat and then uh, as you can see here if you pin the throttle um, it'll build up to a steady 29 30 miles an hour so that was it. Uh, the conversion was a success. Um, the batteries were 235 shipped. The uh, electric bike kit was 255 shipped, and uh, the torque arm was $30 shipped. So it came out to $520 shipped for everything to completely convert the bike. Uh, plus or minus, um, better prices you might find it as, or uh, you know nuts and bolts uh, if you have to buy the, the little zip ties. And um, that doesn't include the price of the LiPo charger. Most guys I know who do it already have a LiPo charger because they're RC car guys, but you want to add on $38 to that if you still need a charger. Now the range so, um, is really good. I can go about four miles on a tenth of the battery. So if all the cells are at 4.2 and um, I lightly pedal with the bike as I'm using uh, the electric power then uh, I can go about four miles until the cells drop to 4.1 so you can roughly go about 30 40 miles depending on how lightly you're pedaling with it whether you're going up hills or whether you're using it in deep sand and it's really using a lot of power so there are a lot of different watt options you can look at when you're buying kits I picked the 48 volt thousand watt because I really wanted power to get up the hills without having to pedal a lot with it so um, I go up really steep hills on my way to work and coming back and I don't have to pedal at all it's really like an electric motorcycle and I've gotten really lazy lately and I just let the bike carry me but I am only a hundred and fifty six pounds if you're 200 220 240 pound guy it's gonna struggle more and it's gonna eat more battery so you have to take that into account and you're gonna want to make sure that you unplug the batteries after you're done you don't want to leave them in the bike in the garage or wherever you keep it because if they're plugged in even though the kit is turned off um, it can still drain the batteries and you don't want those batteries getting drained below 3.1, 3.2 volts per cell or else it can damage them or they could catch on fire. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and if you liked it then uh, feel free to give us a thumbs up. Thanks again. Bye.